Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on the YouTube account and another month has gone, which means we are getting ready for November. That is right, kind of crazy to think, but it is November 2024's tier list and we continue to add more heroes in AFK Arena with the addition of Nox, which is the hypo hero. Over on the test server, we're gonna have to see exactly how this hero performs, but let's break down this tier list. All right guys, so here we got the breakdown. Tier maker over here looking at again, the November 2024 tier list. Let's start in the top left. And as you can see, kind of crazy to think since release, Liberta is still absolutely dominating this tier list, as well as the awakened version of Athelia. They are still the absolute priority heroes to build. They have utility in every single game mode that we have in AFK Arena. And of course, the higher you build them, looking at a plus 40 signature item, even looking at a higher engraving, the better these heroes are gonna perform because they are damage dealers and they are really dependent on the stats that you add in there, making them a very important big build out. Now, third one, we do have Lucila. Now, when you start thinking about support heroes, it's insane how many support heroes that AFK Arena has been released. And of course, we knew again, the new hero that is coming, which is a hypo hero named Nox. He is a support hero as well. So literally we are being overrun with the support class within AFK Arena. Now we have Lan, of course it is our Draconic hero. It is our Highborn Draconic hero. So super, super expensive to build. And again, a support hero, Damia support hero. Crazy amount of utility with this hero with the ability, not only with the collection of the um, level two Mahira, giving the ability to keep your heroes from dying makes it really pivotal within boss fights. In addition, this hero does a considerable amount of damage. So when you do have her built out, she is doing some good damage. Now, Aurelia, of course, support hero in formations can be used in a crazy amount of formations. Utility for this hero goes incredibly well. And even thinking of this game, when you look at the Curse Realm, Nightmare Corridor, even looking at the Treasure Scramble, even campaign formations, once you start getting into multiple game modes and multiple teams, this is the time that you start utilizing all of these heroes across a bunch of teams. Even when you think earlier in like a treasure scramble, a lot of these support heroes are run together in teams and then broken out for the utility a little bit later. Lava Tune, the exact same when it comes to amplifying damage, when it comes to maximizing what heroes can do, Lava Tune as a support does incredibly well. Then we have the awakened version of Laika. So this is the second awakened hero that we have in here. We do have Athelia and then we do have Laika. She is another one that I feel like is going to stay around for a while. Now, the reason being, she is very unique in what she does, how she protects the heroes before she enters battle, the damage that she does once she enters battle, and also the delay coming into battle as well. So again, thinking almost like a Zolrath ability with the delay to come into battle, it, it, it makes a big difference with this hero. And of course, this hero I feel like has the staying power that's coming around. Now looking at our S tier, our second tier, we do have Gavis in here. And again, mage, but very similar to a support hero, doesn't do an incredible amount of damage. But when you look at a hero that not only provides some survivability, but also a little bit of damage kind of as a secondary damage dealer, Gavis does incredibly well. Utility wise, again, majority of formations you can put him in and he'll work incredibly well. Same with the mage right here of Rimuru. We still do see a lot of utility. There isn't any formations with the primary really formations that we run, that does not include Rimuru. Again, not as a damage dealer, as a mage, but it's more of the support aspect that he does provide in there. Now, Amelia is still one that is broken just for the simple fact of what she does with the instant crowd control. And then you couple that with the energy regeneration from those frozen enemies. That is huge. It is very, very big, pivotal, how she works in formations, allowing a lot of damage dealers, including the awakened version of Lucius, to provide and really do an incredible amount of damage. If they are crowd controlled, they're not gonna kill Lucius and she provides that ability. Now, Jerome is another one very unique with the buffing. Now, when it comes to light bears, again, thinking of the awakened version of Belinda and Lucius, he is really imperative because he can bring the light bearer heroes specifically because they do get a 30% bonus to really a whole nother level when it comes to support. When it comes to buffing, does work incredibly well. Now, if you've noticed, even as of recent, again, the Awakened version of Belinda is still doing best in slot within a lot of different teams. Even with the current iteration, um, looking at the Curse Realm and the Nightmare Corridor, she is best in slot in a team in both of those, still seeing a lot of utility in the Treasure Scramble, and of course, Multitude of Game Modes still doing incredibly well. Ivan, one of the very first, you can see kind of four core faction heroes. I know we have Drone back here, 
but it's interesting to see what the energy regeneration, the shielding aspect, the damage amplification um, really comes imperative when you look at a lot of formations. And I feel like also with future releases that we're gonna see this hero again carry a lot of utility, which is the same with Palmer. Again, support hero. When you think of crit damage amplification, that is what Palmer does. It makes the very high crit damage of like a Lucius and Awaken Belinda um, to another level because you can raise the caps or the hard caps that are in there for the heroes themselves by what the hero does itself. Now, when we get into the tanking role, this is actually the first tank we see, um, which is Aethys. Now, Aethys, of course, a lot of utility in a lot of different game modes. When it comes to a tried and true tank, this is a hero that does incredibly well in a lot of different formations, starting to see, again, utility across the game modes with this hero. Now, Rendell falls into the SS tier. A lot of players were kind of questioning being an agility, but of course, it is a support hero. Big thing with Rendell, even currently, doing an incredible amount of damage, but does require a plus 40 signature item to see that damage amplification that we're seeing um, in a few different game modes. And of course, agility support. I wouldn't expect him to do that much damage, but he does in a lot of formations. Rem still holding strong as a big damage dealer. Naruko, even though Naruko is a tank, still has a lot of healing, has a lot of support aspect from the hero, making her imperative to build. And when it comes to the Maulers, you look in here, even the top two tiers, we only have, what, two Mauler heroes. Very important when you start getting in Mauler formations, when you start getting into the tower, and when you also start getting into multiple formations, Naruko will absolutely run it. Shuna, another one, support hero, does incredibly well, does what she does with multiple formations. You can put her in a bunch of different places and will perform incredibly well. Now, the Awakened version of Shimira falling down just a little bit. Now, the reason being for this, we're not seeing as much utility with the current rotation that we're seeing, and it seems like some of the formations where she was best in slot, we're seeing her kind of coming in as a secondary or a sub. Um, we've even seen her run as of recently with the Awakened version of Belinda, so they're running Shimira and Belinda together to maximize the damage in there. So I don't know how long or if she's gonna really rise up in the ranks, we thought maybe with the Awakened version of Thorin that it would drive and really have a different impact in there. But overall, it seems like she's kind of holding steady, dropped a little bit within the tier list. Now, Misha is one, again, when you think of the support hero, the way this hero works, seeing her grow, really showing up in a lot of different formations. The Awakened version of Lucius is still best in slot for a lot of damage dealing formations. And of course, with him, requires a very, very high, strong build out to perform incredibly well. I mean, we're talking a plus 40 signature item, nine of nine or greater furniture, and then looking at a 72 really engraving to get the defense that he needs for the SP effect to boost his attack through the roof. Now the Awakened version of Sophia in here, very similar to what we see with the Awakened version of Solus, as a support hero, as an Awakened support hero, seems like the utility of these heroes are not gonna be going anywhere soon. Just because you can put them in a lot of different formations, they will perform incredibly well and they do that very well. Now we have the Awakened version of, or the regular version of Eugene, which is an Awakened hero, still falling in the formation SS tier. Again, when you think of damage dealers, there's some formations where he is best in slot, he does a lot of damage. There's some formations where they run him for the SP effect and he doesn't, or he's really a secondary damage dealer. Pretty interesting to see. Now, Gwen is one still holding strong when it comes to, again, Highborn Draconic Heroes, super expensive to build, similar to the Awakened version of Lucius, requires a very, very build, big build out to be really exceptional. Even looking at the engraving, 60 plus engraving is what puts her damage to the roof. And if you're familiar with the Abyssal Expedition we just had, she was the best in slot damage dealer by leaps and bounds. I'm talking two, three, four, five X over the normal teams if you had Gwen. It was really um, divided in the AE from the players that had Gwen and had Gwen really built out and the players that didn't when it came to really breaking out the damage. Wake Conversion of Solus, again, a lot of formations still running it. Trishia as a sub to some of the damage dealers in here. So if you don't have some of these um, Awakened heroes really built, Trishia still does well in there. And then the Awakened version of Eron, we are slowly seeing the increase utility within, within this hero. And really, it seems like he has been replacing Rem 
overall, and he's also been replacing a couple other heroes running with Ulna in some formations, but it seems like the Awakened version of Iran, especially being built out, has been doing incredibly well, and we expect him to perform a little bit better in the future. Now, as we get down a little bit further, we get into our S tier heroes. Now, these are the heroes, and as you can see from this list, most of them are either one niche performance heroes where they are not, um, you know, where they might fill in one slot or two slots kind of here and there, or they're really as a sub or a support hero for other heroes that we've seen. Now, even looking just a quick li list down here, we have a tank right here with Vithiel, which does work as a very strong buffer. Not so much the tanking aspect. Damage is still pretty good with him, but he provides buffs for the team. Adrian and Elise, the exact same, even though I believe that is a warrior. It might be a ranger. I I'm drawing a blank on that one. But overall, this hero itself, when you build it out, it is a good support hero for the rest of the heroes. Hildwin, even though it's a mage, again, a very strong support hero. Niche in some formations. The Awakened version of Baden slowly being replaced. It seems like falling down the tier list. Nyla, best in slot in one or two of our um, Curse Realm comps. Still seeing some utility within PvP. Damaris, again, as a buffer, as a crowd controller. Still seeing some utility in a lot of different game modes. Kelton, again, as a secondary DPS. Used to be number one, running with the Awakened version of Baden. As of now, definitely in the Hypo Tower, absolutely a requirement. But again, seeing some as a sub DPS or a secondary DPS in there. Now, Entendre is one, requires a big build out, but does have a few formations that she is best in slot in. But there are some other game modes where she does not perform well at all. And the reason, very similar to what we see with Lucius, it is the survivability aspect where she really does fall a little bit short. Villanelle, energy disintegration support hero, works incredibly well. Rosaline can be really put in any formation that is following your primary damage dealer, gonna do incredibly well. Ulna, of course, straight up for the immunity that we still see in there. Rain as a damage buffer, we do see Rain used in a few formations. And thinking of the utility of these heroes like Rain, um, it's really dependent on how many heroes you have built and where you do have these built. So thinking of even a free-to-play player, the SSS tier, that top tier, the SS tier, this S tier, and probably even some heroes falling within this A tier are going to be the go-to heroes for pretty much everything. When you start thinking of five teams, 25 heroes, six teams, you're up to 30 heroes that you need built out and really developed within AFK Arena, so it does make a really big difference. Lady Simona still running some formations with Shamira. Um, Rowan kind of as, again, kind of a backup support. Um, energy regeneration is absolutely there. Mortis as a buffer. Scarlet, when it comes to the Nightmare Corridor, burst damage of Scarlet, still best in slot in some formations. Iran is another one, very, very strong burst damage. Um, short of that, not being used really many other places. Silas as a regular four faction hero. Graveborn Tower, 110% run. Even thinking of a sub for some of these really big support heroes, works incredibly well if you're an older player that has them built, does provide an immunity and a buff. Matria still falling down a little bit further. Hypo Tower really being used. Not a lot of utility outside of that. When we get into the A formations, and I'll just go ahead and point out a few in here. Um, first of all, looking right here, guys, you can see that we do have Kregor. So Kregor is falling into this A tier as we see it right now. Um, definitely gonna see and see kind of questionable where he's going to be at, but these are the heroes that are either going to be tower formation heroes that you're using. Most of these have maybe had maybe one niche place or have been slowly kind of phased out a lot of different content, or is niche overall. And then of course, looking in the B tier, we have the Awakened version of Thorin. Right now, with him still being relatively new, relatively early, um, we're seeing him, and I believe we've seen him in one formation so far. A lot of players are trying to figure out where he's gonna work, if he's gonna work in different places. Whale formations, we still haven't really seen his utility and seen him put in a lot of different places. And of course, they did buff him from the original release because he was really underperforming where they wanted him to be. So they did buff him up a little bit. But again, he does require a big build out, which a lot of players don't want to commit to, especially not knowing if or where that hero is going to be used at all. So again, really big question mark when it comes to that awakened version of Thorin. But even looking through here, most of these guys used to be the best in slot. These were the best in slot heroes. And if you're playing AFK Companions, um, most of these heroes are in Companions as you sit right now. 
and even looking here down into like the C tier. Again, these are heroes that are kind of the secondary subpar. Might use them in a formation here and there, possibly in a tower formation, but not gonna have a lot of utility. And then of course we have the bottom tier, which is just that it is really the bottom tier heroes. And a majority of these didn't have any utility, even thinking of our Walker, Rigby, Sirius, even looking you know, a while ago, even Oscar on release, they never really had much utility in AFK Arena. Maybe super niche, maybe when they were released. And then of course, no really need to build them all at all right now. Even looking at the C, these are heroes that are not gonna be in the, the tier list or really the wish list that you're gonna be building, that you're gonna be focusing on. And a lot of times when you start getting into the A and the B, these are going to be all of your tower formation heroes. These are gonna be the one that fits the bill. And of course, the original version of Baden is still down here, but still seeing again some little niche formations where we're still seeing them work incredibly well. All right guys, so that is gonna do it for our November 2024 tier list. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.